Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. My name is David, I'm a life coach and I make these videos to hopefully help you guys heal from emotional trauma. Today's video is about relationships that we were in, toxic relationships and and how we stayed in them, one, one way we stayed in them because we don't wanna do that again, right? So we have to learn. Let's learn from our mistakes. Let's learn what went wrong and how we can avoid this to ever happen again in our lives. What a waste of time, huh? Especially if we don't learn. What a waste of time. Um, so excusing toxic behaviors from narcissistic people. Uh, most of you guys watching this video have been in some kind of relationship with family, friends, dating people that are narcissistic and have toxic behaviors. Over time, this can cause post-traumatic stress disorder. You can also even complex post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, this could be something that took years, your whole childhood, 20s, 30s, 40s. I suffered... I believe I suffered from CPTSD for like 40 years and um, all my relationships were toxic until I, until I wasn't toxic anymore, until I got healthy and uh, recognizing my behaviors in my past relationships is and learning from them is how I don't do this anymore. And I don't, and um, I'm not perfect at it, but I'm always getting better and better and better at it. I'm still always learning. This process never ends, never stops. So, codependent behaviors. And, I, and there's that word, codependency. I know a lot of you guys don't like that word. But it's really important to identify these behaviors. And codependency, that's all it is. It's just behaviors, okay? It's just behaviors. Um, the, the premise to a codependent relationship is to never fix problems and never end the relationship. This is the number one way to stay in toxic relationships and that is to have no accountability, no responsibility by excusing and labeling. Okay? I've seen this a lot, a lot, a lot. I used to know somebody that was a narcissistic person. Don't need to call them a narcissist. I don't know. I'm diagnosing people. But a narcissistic person used to do this. And I learned from this, watching this person do it all the time. All the time. They had a toxic marriage. He had toxic relationships with his children. He had toxic relationships with people in the workplace. He, I don't even know if he really had friends, but the people that were associated with uh, toxic relationships. And one way that we do this, our codependent behaviors that kept us in these toxic relationships with toxic narcissistic people is we might do this label and excuse, label and excuse or excuse and label. This is what I mean. Say you have a narcissistic person, okay? And this is because this is what I saw. Very codependent behaviors. And all his relationships were narcissistic around him and, and never fixed or addressed or accountable or responsible. Nothing ever, ever, ever. And so she... Now, he's talking about different scenarios. I've had conversations with him about relationships in his life, different ones, okay, and at different times. And and instead of fixing anything, instead of holding a, a woman accountable that is um, not doing things that he wants, I'm not being general, but just, just it, it's like this. It's like he'll say, oh, yeah, but she's just stupid. Oh, yeah, he's just lazy. She's just OCD. He's just old. He's deaf. She's just annoying. He's just slow. And these are excuses. So he's making excuses for another person to not even be uh, accountable or responsible to ever fix anything or change anything. No, don't even talk to them about it. Don't even say a word. Just go, oh, no, she's lazy. He's stupid. They're old. That's they're slow. And, and, and so nothing ever gets fixed. I hope I'm making my point. If not, let me use an example. The workplace, okay? Say you have a boss and a boss is to manage this business that you work for, okay? That you're, you're one of this manager's employees. How can a manager manage a business and make it functional if he doesn't address employees' problems? Things are doing wrong, right? So like one employee comes to work late every day. Oh, he's just slow. Always slow, aren't you? Take forever to get dressed and take forever to get on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Every day. And it just continues every day, every day. He's always late. He's always late. He's always late. And that makes other people late and not respect the boss either and stuff like this. Or, I mean, I could just sit here and do this all day long. I'm not kidding. Um, I've managed businesses and it's not easy. It's not easy. Directing is the key. And you have to hold people accountable. It's like, say somebody always breaks something. Oh, she's just a, she's just a drug addict, probably high. And <laughs> say, so, okay, well, how many things is she going to break next week? And the week after that, and the week after that. Now it's costing a lot of money and it's costing time to clean up and it's not functioning. I think now you guys might understand or get my point. Excusing employees' failures and incompetencies instead of addressing them and saying you cannot be late and you're late. This is what causes problems from you being late. You cannot be late ever again. If so, here's what happens and we terminate this relationship we have. You are fired. And this is how we must address our personal relationships. And I'm not saying like a boss. I'm not saying like a hard ass and threats and stuff like this. It has to function properly. And that means emotionally. I don't like it when you do this. This annoys me when you do this. I, this this makes me feel like you have no respect for me. This makes me always, I don't feel secure. Like you're going to do it again. I, and we do this and we're holding them accountable. And then we're holding them responsible to be better at it, to fix it, to change, to do something about it. Okay? Relationships must be functional and loving and growing. Must be moving forward. Must be caring. Must have must feel secure. And we do this. I've said this a million times. We do this by communicating vulnerably. Holding people accountable. Holding people responsible. And accept who people are. But we don't have to accept toxic behaviors. But we have to accept who they are. And when people show you over and over and over again, we're just going to say that's who you are. And if you don't like it, you can change it. But I'm not waiting anymore. Because the other end is excusing toxic behaviors by trying and trying and trying and trying and trying, right? Trying, trying. And it's not equal. They're not trying as hard. Not even trying at all. We're hoping, we're waiting, we're wishing, and we're repeating and repeating and repeating, hopefully, that they will change who they are. And so it's like I have a list of these things I want in a person, but you don't have any of them. So you need to do this more. You need to try this more. You, you didn't do any of this last week. This week, you have to do this and this and this and this. And this. I'm sick of telling you, you got to be like this. I know you're not, but you have to. No, they don't. And they're not going to. Not going to. If they want to with the next person, great. If they have some deal with their God or something and they want to change, great. They want to go to therapy and all this stuff. Great, great, great. Go do it. Bye-bye. Because I hope that you believe you are worthy of more. At least of what you want. At least a person that possesses the things that you value in life. Right? Um, always ask questions and tell me what you guys think. Tell me some of your experiences you had. Um, maybe look back at some of the ways that you excused. I did because I had a very extremely toxic person I dated for 10 years. And I, it's amazing that I stayed in that relationship. I tried to get out so many times. It was over once or twice and I got back. I mean, it's just incredible, but I know it, that, that was one of the easiest things for me to do right in the beginning of my healing. And I'm looking back at this relationship saying, my God, did I excuse her for everything? Oh, she's been sexually abused. So it's okay that she sleeps around with everybody. Oh, she, you know, her mom used to hit her and hit her and hit her. That is, so it's okay that she, you know, hits me with objects and rips my clothes off me and stuff like this. Um, it's okay that, that she, I mean, lies to me and cheats on me and says, she doesn't really know. She's been so abused and so hurt. She's, you know, people have always done these bad things to her. And that's how we do it. That's how we stay in a toxic relationship. Never hold anybody accountable, responsible. Don't communicate and be vulnerable. And we excuse and we label. Oh, they're stupid. They're just slow. They're just dumb. They're just weak. They're just uh, obsessive compulsive. Uh, they they just were beat when they were a kid. They're just eh, me. And it just continues and continues and continues. And you are wasting your life. Okay? So let's not do this again. Learn as much as you can. Ask questions down below. I'll always answer them. And tell me some of your guys' experiences, please. I really, really enjoy that. And I know other people do too. I can tell my experiences, but, you know, there's a hundred of you go down there and talk about your experiences and that helps other people. 
Thank you, everybody. Love yourself first. Enjoy your weekend. Bye-bye.